Welcome to The Meltdown. We're talking the business of sports with host Vince Thompson, the president, founder, and CEO of Melt, one of the leading sports marketing companies in the country. Welcome back, viewers. Meltdown. I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, and CEO of Melt. Uh, don't forget, follow me on social media at Vinny Inc., V-I-N-N-Y-I-N-C, or go to our website, Melt ATL, our YouTube channel, um, for great information and sources of the Meltdown, Melt University. Uh, we have been rolling on, and we are rolling on into an even stranger and stranger period of time with today's special guest, whom had, she and I traveled to Hollywood together seven months ago and said, we want to pitch a movie that says um, there's going to be no fans at Augusta National in November for the Masters with ESPN College Game Day. They not only would have run us out of town, they probably would have locked us up in some local mental institution. So Allison Fillmore uh, is my special guest and one of my favorite people in the world. Here's my first hot take of the day. She probably will be the next commissioner of the PGA uh, or NASCAR, and I'm going to be her agent. And so, uh, and then when I'm broke on my couch, she hopefully will give me a job. And so, uh, but she is executive director of the Tour Championship, which is at East Lake Golf Club. Uh, amazing story of what she's done and what Mr. Tom Cousins has done and the foundation and the community and the corporate sponsors. And, and um, you know, she's been on our podcast, Superstar in the, in the sports world, Falcons, Atlanta Motor Speedway. I, I was so delighted when she got named uh, Exec Director of the Tour Championship. And not only that, um, she has the distinct resume or pedigree of her first championship Tiger Woods was the massive comeback of all time. Her second one, she was taking care of somebody who had been struck by lightning. And the third was she ran a very fanless um, tour championship. And so uh, she's joining us today to talk about it's a mad, mad world out there. And we're going to talk about Augusta and a lot of other things that are going on in the sports world. The tour's obviously done, you know, leadership of Jay Monahan and Matt Rapp and all the guys, Ty Botal, uh, you know, really, really had a, a, as, as good of a season as they could have made out of it. So, uh, Allison, we're breaking it down at the Meltdown today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy coming on and visiting with you. Was that a, was that a, was that a good introduction or do I need to do more? No, no, that is perfect. Again, if I could just have you introduce me every single time. Yeah, I'll, I'll go everywhere and I'll be your, uh, I'll be the WWD announcer or send this to, uh, to Monahan when you, uh, you're going through a wrap when you're going through your, your annual review. But uh, um, a little bit about the tour championship first. Like I said, you've, um, you've been through it. I mean, you've been through it all. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no, and we probably need to get you back on our, um, on our Melt You podcast because there's really no manual uh, owner's guide, owner's manual to really what you've experienced as a professional event producer, sports marketing executive over the last three years. I mean, that famous march down 18 uh, with Tiger uh, still gives me chills to think about. Uh, obviously, uh, that, that infamous Saturday of the Tour Championship, uh, you, know, you know, dealing with how you did it. I mean, you literally saved lives uh, during the lightning strike and then, you know, running a, a major, um, a major event at the scale you ran it on in the tour championship this year. And then, you know, a lot of the proceeds of the event go to the East Lake foundation without that revenue from the ticket sales and the fans and the concessions and everything, uh, how you rallied the community and the corporate community and marshaled the forces to, to, to raise those monies. And so before we dive into, the Masters, talk about, um, out of the, all of these three, um, what, what, what stands out the most to you from all the experiences? Because it's very inspirational of what you've gone through literally in the past two to three years. You know what, honestly, um, I think the thing that really stands out to me the most is the hard work of our team. Right. Um, Look, I'm just one person. We have 
we have seven others that sit here and, and help put on this event, as well as all the folks from the PGA Tour. And while each one had its super challenges, um, we were able to overcome every single one of them. Look, in 2018, when Tiger was marching down 18, that wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, we all know right. that, that we had people jump the ropes, but you know, our team, our security team, our volunteers, everybody stepped in to help. In 2019, I was actually one of the first people on the scene. When no, I know. I, yeah, I know. Well, they, you're credited with saving the life from, from, from what I understand. Well, I, take, I know that, but again, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, urban legend. <laughs> I was there. Um, and just making sure like our team rallied around the folks that got hurt and were able to get them help as quickly as possible. Again, it's teamwork. And 2020, no shortage of teamwork here. Right. Um, we worked every single day with different challenges, different scenarios. We ran through probably, we, we lettered our scenarios. I think we were on scenario F or G uh, wow. for the championship. Wow. And honestly, it was a ton of talking with the city, a ton of talking with the states. You know, really, I tell people it was the most challenging event to plan for, yet probably one of the easiest to execute because of the lack of fans. And I can tell you this, those players miss those fans oh, so God, much. Yeah. They bring so much energy to, to the sporting event. And a lot of guys have, have credited the fans for their wins, and they don't feel right. like, they don't feel normal playing out there right now when they don't have those screams and cheers. You, you hit a 40 foot putt and you don't hear any claps or, you know, you, you feed off that energy right. and those guys don't get the chance to do that anymore. So I would have to say teamwork is, is honestly the constant that has been a part of every single one of those years. Mm -hmm. Well, and like I said, that's a tribute, you know, to you to have, uh, you know, great team players and, how they respond to you, and um, and I, you know, I'm hoping that you know when we get to the other side of this, you know, you'll be able to you know share your thoughts, share your journal, or journal. I mean, I mean, you know, just great lessons on um, on leadership, and and I think overall, um, I think the you know if you look at all the major professional sports leagues, I'd say that the tour, PGA Tour, and the leadership, um, you know, probably gets an A uh, to an A plus for for everything given the circumstances. And, um, and you know, and that's a tribute to, you know, Commissioner Monaghan and all the great people in place. And also uh, the local community, I, you know, I'm really, really proud of our very dear friend, Chris Womack, now president of Georgia Power. Um, I known him since 1987 and, and I could tell really back then uh, that he was destined obviously for greatness and stardom and uh, you know his leadership along with many many others you know Mr. Cousins the East Lake Miracle and all that we'll come back and talk about that the other day so well, another day but speaking of the world of the strange and abstract uh, I, I do want to give the, the community typically the impact on the tour championship is around three to three point five million right Correct. Last year, we donated just a little over $3.5 million. And, 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 if, and if people have not really driven out into that East Lake area, uh, and I know you, I think you and your family live there. I mean, I think it's just, you know, the schools, I've spoken at the schools, I've, we've given back into that community a lot. We've done, you know, professional days and, 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 and all that. It really just, uh, you know, is amazing. You know, my dear friend, you know, Charlie Yates, his father has the, the, the golf course, the, the, the rest of soul, um, you know, host the first tee and, 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 and all that, the purpose built schools, really just impacting uh, a lot of lives and a, and a great inspiration and a great, and a, and a great model. So it, you know, and, and I know other cities and other golf tournaments have really mimicked or imitated, um, you know, what you and the team have, you know, have done, um, you know, out in that, in that area. So it's, um, it, it, it's just it's just inspirational uh, and Thank so uh, let's talk about Augusta so I have to tell you this this is really cool because I just got this information about 20 minutes ago but Fred Ridley from Augusta 
was talking about how they are trying to mimic what Eastlake is doing in their charitable giving through the tour championship. So for him to go out and say that this year was really exciting for us. So, so. on the record, let me get this straight. Augusta National Chairman Fred Ridley said that Eastlake was a model of what they want to do for the Augusta community. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, pretty exciting. That may be one. Of the, uh, that may be one of the highest compliments uh, that anybody uh, could get. And again, it's a tribute to you and the team and and and, and the community and everybody. But um, before we dive into the fanless experience. At, at the Masters uh, that, that tees off tomorrow. Um, I've studied this phenomenon of Augusta for many, many years. Uh, and I'll confess that I still truly don't quite understand it all, okay? Um, you know, you got this relatively tiny town, relatively in the middle of nowhere, and then this Oasis golf course, uh, is dropped in, Bobby Jones. And basically that week is a north of $100 million economic impact, which by the way, would be an enormous impact in the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You drop it in and you hear all the stories where the people basically pay their mortgages for the year Absolutely. based on renting their houses out. Um, you know, you have 7,200 hotel rooms, which probably, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting to kind of see if the membership of Augusta leans in and, 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 and helps the hotel rooms and the communities. And to your point about the East Lake and, and all that, a north of a hundred million dollar, um, tens of millions of dollars. And, you know, in the, in the patrons badges, um, you know, never been played in the fall. Uh, typically, they're ready to, you know, you know, begin to kind of go to their second wave of the year. Um, I'm seeing where it's the first time ever you can buy the merch online or you can buy the pimento cheese online. But I love that idea. Still, I love that, but I don't think there's anything better than having that pimento cheese or having that egg salad and having that ice cold Coke or having that, um, you know, having that, that, that cold beer and just meandering around. And then, and then if you think of the average, I think the average – you know probably more about it than I do. The average ring or the average per cap of people going into that, into the store is north of four hundred, probably to five, four, five, six hundred dollars. Oh yeah, I think it's seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. So it's got to be number one in the world. Absolutely. Um, so from if 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 you sit in Fred Ridley's seat and chair and the membership. Um, Let's break it down from the from the impact on the the, the town and the residents, uh, the patrons who aren't able to come, who, you know, many many men, you know, the people plan their whole you know, family affairs around it. You can put mm -hmm. your chair there. Nobody messes with it. The par three is the most amazing thing. They you know the tradition, unlike no others, it, and which will mean differently things different this year. And then and then as it relates to the to the to the membership. And then as it relates to the players, and then I'm actually interested to see where the ratings are going to go because, you know, you've, you've had dilution in viewership. Yeah. Uh, you were going to have a lot of college ball this Saturday. Obviously, the SEC is kind of getting wiped out this Saturday. But um, let's kind of break it down. I'd like to hear from you how you would break some of those buckets down. So you've got, you know, it, it's a big weekend, like you said. And, you know, Let's, let's go back to where you, you kind of started. You know, this is Bobby Jones' course. He created this. But at the beginning of, of when he started, I think he started, I think it opened in 1934, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the tournament that it is today. Right. Um, it took a while for this tournament to really get its wings. Um, the USGA didn't even acknowledge this tournament um, as they declined the offer from Bobby Jones to actually hold a U.S. Open there. So it, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy things that are synonymous with everything that's going on this weekend at the Masters. And I find it really interesting with the whole college game day being there, which is so awesome, so different. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are that are really interesting about it. Yes, you, you got the merch. They, they found a way to capitalize on the merchandise. 
You know, if you had a ticket for 2020, you can purchase the merchandise. They brought the experience to you at home with, you know, it's $150, you get pimento cheese, you get egg salad, you get- Now you're making me wrap. hungry. <laughs> you get wrappers from, you know, the, the sandwiches, you get 20 master's cups, and it's, it's still inexpensive. I love my like, cups, I love my cups. Yeah, exactly. So there's so many great ways. They really thought it out and they had the opportunity to do that. And I don't expect anything different from them. They're, they've, they've mastered this whole situation. Yes, you do have a lot of, a lot of people in the community that are going to hurt this year. Look, it, it's a shared burden, right? So, you know, you've got restaurants that make, that make their money for the entire year through this week. You've got hotel rooms that use this, these funds to help make you know, help make it through the rest of the year, help keep with the upkeep of the, of the, um, of the hotel, you know, little things like that. you got a lot of brokers, a ton of brokers that make a yeah. ton of money off this event that, that can't do it this year. So, you know, while everybody is, is, is really hitting, um, hitting their stride when it comes to the masters, they haven't been able to do it this year. So the masters did a great job of really recognizing those specific buckets in which they could still integrate with the fans and engage with the fans. But however, you know, you, you still have, there's a hole there, right? Because you don't have the fans. The fans are what brings energy to this event. The fans are what drives energy for the players. And honestly, for the staff, that's all there, right? You right. know, so it's, you don't have the par three contest. You know, there's so much that's well, not the happening. Well, practice, too, is so, I mean, like, that's yeah. a fun day. So much that's not happening. But then it also gives them the opportunity to be creative when it comes to no fans. So, like, CBS is looking at doing different camera angles for the event, right. trying out different things there. You've got College Game Day that's coming now. Like, that would have never happened with fans. So... Kudos to Augusta for really kind of thinking outside the box and being able to engage the fans during this tumultuous time. So, and also you think about Berkman's place, which is this, you know, spectacular Taj Mahal that's only open seven days a year. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see, um, you know, if it's open next April, that'll be the first time that that will have been used in well over a year, year and a half. Absolutely. So, or two years. And so think about, you know, I mean, the place is like, you know, like I said, it's like, you know, the Taj Mahal. So it, just a lot of things that, 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 that you don't think about. Uh, I always say it's the highest concentration of net worth in the world that oh, week, yeah. the security. Um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to really kind of, go behind the scenes and see the security apparatus, the real security apparatus. And, um, and I'm sure obviously it will still be because obviously the membership, mm -hmm. the net worth of the membership uh, and who the membership is, the composition of membership, uh, you know, as well. But, um, but it'd be interesting to see how the, uh, how the, the, the members uh, respond to the, uh, the, the community because, and also too, like, I mean, I always took guests over there. We produced activations. I mean, the 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 ripple and the triple the, the trickle down effect of that uh, is it's almost incalculable. But it's in the it it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And so, again, had you and I traveled to Hollywood and said, "Hey, we want to have College Game Day on the ninth hole, the ninth green." Uh, and I'm not sure if they're going to have any games to talk about. Um, they would have they would have run us out of town. And uh, but if you look at it from a practical perspective or a business perspective, obviously Disney and ABC and ESPN have a lot of vested financial interest in the coverage of Augusta and the coverage of the Masters. Uh, they obviously have a lot of vested financial interest in the coverage of college football. Um, I mean, it does make sense for a lot of reasons, the, the cross-pollination or the cross-index of the, of the viewers of college football and, and, and golf. And, and obviously, the Masters gets a lot of casual viewers and casual interest, similar to March Madness, just because it's the Masters. But uh, then maybe we can have college game day at Eastlake uh, next year, depending on, uh, on when it is. But, uh, but 
Labor Day weekend. I would like, I, well, you could, I mean, listen, you know, you've been wanting to do this for years. You know, Gary Stoken has been wanting to do it for years. I mean, you know, you guys are always ahead of your time, but, uh, but maybe you and I can ride up on Saturday and, 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 and be a part of the pr production. But, uh, but, but what is, what is, I predict, I think college game day will probably have its higher, highest probably viewership numbers oh, yeah. um, ever. And when, and if you were producing, what are some of the fun things that you might? So I would talk about kind of the history of both, right? So I think college game day started in 1987 and it was a, it, it just kind of sat there. It, they didn't travel. In 93 is when they really started to pick up and start going and traveling all over. And it's kind of synonymous with the Masters, right? It didn't start off as this big event, but yeah. then grew. It's such an awesome intersection and marriage of two phenomenal sports. And let's talk about, okay, so you've got the biggest sporting event in golf, and then one of the most popular sporting, you know, kind of TV shows in football. You know, to have this in SEC country where, you know, football is, is king and golf is king, you know, you've got this marriage of these two awesome sports. So, like, I, I think Lee Corso is awesome. I can't wait to see if he's ran, he, he does his helmet pick. You know, um, I think there's a lot of cool things that they can do. They Obviously, you, you're going to bring in, you know, golfers, but, you know, bring in past, you know, SEC champs, you know, bring in, you know, coaches bring it I mean you're right they're not there's not to be a lot going on this weekend in terms of golf I mean in terms of football because of COVID but you know they can get really creative in terms of what they do they're doing some like really cool drone shots as well so right. I, I think it's going to be really neat and I think the world's their oyster when it comes to this they can get really creative and I'm super excited to see what they're going to do this week. well you know so so the jury's out on who the guest picker could be could it be Condi Rice could it be Lynn Swan could it be Tiger Woods I mean you don't I mean this could be uh, this could be uh, uh, really really fun uh, uh, guest pickers and, and, and again like I said I think the the the, the, the novel nature of all of this will probably drive, uh, you know, a hell of a lot of eyeballs. Oh, yeah. um, and um, before we, before we leave, this is fascinating. Um, are you able to go to this? Cause I don't think, cause I don't, I don't think a lot of people are actually able to go even, you know, with, no. uh, and I'm not sure. I, 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 I will always tell you the, 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 the Sunday of the Masters is my most favorite nap of the year, you know, where, where Jim Nance is sort of, you know, lullabying you in. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, but, um, and, you know, and we'll put you on the spot a little bit too. Um, you know, a lot of these golfers really, really well. And um, if you had a sentimental pick, who would your sentimental pick be? My sentimental pick. Goodness. You know, I would love to see Tiger take it again. Honestly, I think that would be amazing. Um, it would be. You know. And obviously, uh, you know, the world's a Twitter over Bryson. Uh, Bryson. Oh, my gosh. So, I saw this really, I was reading this article that they're saying Nick, um, Nick Baldo said that he would strip down and run naked if Bryson shot the green on the first tee. So, I, I, I'm, I'm going to chime in and watch. Okay, do you think Bryson could actually do that? What's it, 445? 445. If he can do that, oh my God, the game of golf is over. Like, he's going to win everything. It's ridiculous. I read a, a fascinating article. I forgot where it was this morning on uh, on, on Bryson, and he's uh, he's certainly a very colorful personality and clearly was, was kind of destined uh, uh, for greatness. But so going forward, where do you where do you think and obviously there's a lot of uncertainty and unvariables with the virus and the vaccine and all those types of things but where do you see the tour landing in um in in, in 2021 as it relates to the the full slate and fans coming back because i know you, you guys have had some fans back recently mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so uh where do you where where you know from a crystal ball perspective where do you sort of see all this going so um, our Q1 events will have fans, but anywhere from about 25 to 50% capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, for our events, we feel like, you know, we're beginning of September. Um, 
we are not going on sale for tickets just yet. Realizing what's going on in this world right now. You know, we know that cases are spiking. We know that people are being affected by this terrible pandemic. So we're going to halt on that. You know, we've done really great with our current clients that were there for 2020 and have stepped up and donated a ton of their funds back to the East Lake Foundation. Right. And then, you know, are signing on for 2021. We feel like there's going to be a really good appetite for hospitality for our event. However, leading up to it, you know, I know the tournaments are working very closely with state and local governments to make sure that they can put on the event safe. Um, you're going to see masks mandates everywhere. There's right. talks of there's talks of pulling food and beverage out along the along the um, rope lines so people keep their masks up. Um, you know, we've got to rethink how we actually put on this event. Um, it's uh, it's definitely challenging. However, you know, we have the whole PGA tour. We've got some really great minds yeah, that do. have been focusing on this pandemic for the last eight months and have really kind of changed their job description into, you know, uh, doctors that have never been in that space before. Right. So it's been a lot really of out of their comfort zones. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and all of us have been asked to do so. So, so quick, quick question, uh, because um, you know, uh, in a in a in a no, quote unquote normal tour championship, because you just hit on a really good point about the cooperation and and and, and all that. How many total? people, including all of the volunteers and all the students and all the workers and all the parking and all the uh, transportation and shuttles and all that, how many total people participate in helping produce the tour championship in total? A little over a thousand. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you're talking about, was it, you're talking about this year? No, no, no. No, a normal year. A normal year. It's got to be a thousand though, right? It's over that. So we have 1,300 volunteers just on a normal year. Wow. Um, then you add in TV, you add in staff, you add in vendors. You're up to almost 2,000 people that help put the event on every single year. So and, that's, really- you know, and that's what we tell a lot of people, and that's what we tell um, a lot of our students. Like There are tremendous opportunities to go volunteer and network and build credentials and build resumes and do good. Uh, if they want a career in, you know, professional sports or college sports or professional golf and producing and, um, and, 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 and all those types of things. Because, and, and, and what we tell people is that you're basically the CEO of a multi-million dollar company. And people don't really realize that when they hear the term golf term. We say the same thing with the athletic directors. They're the CEO of a $150 million organization. So um, this has been great. Uh, it's been, it was just so good. Uh, I mean, the, you know, silver linings of COVID, if there are any, you know, you don't lose anybody that you love is that um, we're able to have these conversations uh, from the technology, the fascination of breaking down, um, you know, uh, fanless experiences in Augusta and how we're going to be doing things different going forward and uh, getting pushed out of our comfort zone and all that. So, um, Allison Fillmore, Executive Director of the Tour Championship, future commissioner of the PGA or NASCAR. I'm her agent. Shamelessly plugging. Shamelessly plugging. I'm going to tweet that out later today too, and uh, and I'll probably get shadow banned. But uh, such a delightful conversation. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, can um, interested viewers, listeners, or students, how can they follow you on social media? So I'm on LinkedIn under Allison Fillmore. I'm yeah. also on Twitter under Allie T23, A-L-L-I-T23, and the same on Instagram. So I have to point something out, though. Another silver lining about COVID is that it created a super season for golf. So now you've got 50 events with six majors in it. So the Tour Championship is going to even mean more next year. So... Make sure you guys get out there and watch. Super and season. Super. From, a super, from a superstar, Allison Fillmore, one of my favorite people. And um, thank you so much for coming on The Meltdown. 
and being with us today. We're going to have you back on the podcast. I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, CEO of Melt, and author of the upcoming book, Bill Brand New, hot seller on Amazon. Uh, so anyway, Allie, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MeltATL and follow Vince at Vinny Inc. and on LinkedIn as Vince Thompson.